section 8.3 showing a quadrilateral's parallelogram. Recall, we know that a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. So essentially, we're going to have one pair of opposite sides parallel and then a second pair of parallel. If we have a parallelogram, we know four things. We know that opposite sides are congruent. We know that opposite angles are congruent. We know that consecutive angles are supplementary and we know that diagonals bisect each other. Okay, so just a quick rundown. We know if we have a parallelogram, the opposite sides are congruent, the opposite angles are congruent, that consecutive angles are supplementary, and that our two diagonals will bisect each other. we find then that the converse is true as well. Meaning, if both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral must be a parallelogram. So we see this. If we have a quadrilateral and we know that opposite sides are congruent, Well, if that's the case, we could draw a line and see that triangles are congruent. Triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CDB by side, side, side. If that's the case, then angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 by CPCTC and angle 3 is congruent to angle 4 for the same reason. If angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent, we have two lines cut by a transversal where alternate interior angles are congruent. This means that those two lines AB and CD must be parallel. So AB is parallel to CD. Similarly, if angle 3 and angle 4 are congruent, again we have two lines cut by a transversal where alternate interior angles are congruent. This means that BC is parallel to AD. And the reason for both of these is the converse to the alternate interior angle theorem. And that was a very quick proof. Okay, we have some other theorems to look at.